Yes, Todd, I am I am imitating you again. Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to part number ten of my bookshelf tour. So uh I was I was see you can yeah. So you can see in the background, this is my first bookcase, and it has six shelves on. I have another bookcase like that just through there uh, in the hallway of my house. And that only has four shelves because the top two, basically the shelves have been removed. Because of where it, where it is, there are some wall hangers. So I took the shelves out and there's no back to my bookcase. So it could sit flush. I don't know why I'm telling you this because you're probably not that interested and you just want me to get to the books. The point I was trying to make with that is that after this shelf, we're into the books in my bedroom, which is the last room of books. So, yeah. Anyway, let's get started. First book of today we have is I Killed the Man Who Wrote This Book uh, by Theodore Fickelstein. It's just an odd collection of poetry. I mean, you can tell from like the cover and this is the back and stuff. I'll read you one of his poems. This is uh, Jack's Not Dull. See if you can guess the reference here. I am insulted. What? You think that because I work all day that I am a dull boy? You don't know me. You, you really are a jerk. I don't go around making assumptions about you because you overwork. Have you ever heard of work ethic, eh? Maybe I am the hardest worker there is, hey? Maybe you should be modelling your life after mine, hey? I'm not even going to think about it too much. But you are really a jerk for spreading lies about me. All work, no play will end up with my foot up your... Here we have Laura Fitton, Michael E. Gruen, and Leslie Poston. Twitter for dummies. There's even a foreword by Jack Dorsey, who is the founder and chairman of Twitter. Unfortunately, when was this book printed? Well, I don't even know. It doesn't say when it was printed, but it does have a big withdrawn sticker on it, because I guess it's ex-library. By the time I read this, I was already very familiar with Twitter and just reading books like that because I worked in marketing and it was supposed to show my commitment to the job, I guess. I don't know. Here we have F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby, and this copy actually is a nice little hardback. Interestingly enough, when the movie of The Great Gatsby came out, I was working in a PR agency, and one of their clients was a company called Sharnos, which makes hosiery and tights and stockings and stuff. So they did like a gift thing where they sent journalists a copy of the book with some of these tights, because they were, you know, the tights that were wore, or based on the designs of that era. And uh, so yeah, they sent all these out, and they still had a box with half a dozen copies of The Great Gatsby left. So I just stole one, and read it, and enjoyed it. All right, now we're going to make a start on my Ian Fleming books. So Ian Fleming, obviously the author of James Bond. This is actually the first book as well, Casino Royale. I don't suppose I have a huge amount to say about all of these, but that was actually the first book in the series and the first book that I read. I think it was the first book in the series. Then we have Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So it may surprise you to know that Ian Fleming, who wrote James Bond, also wrote Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And I've read this and it's good. I actually... I don't remember the movie. I know I've seen it as a child, but I don't remember it. So I couldn't tell you how similar they are. Diamonds are forever. It's a beautiful cover, this. This is the Penguin uh, Penguin editions. Love it. Here we have Doctor No. As you can see, I don't have a matching set. We have For Your Eyes Only. Uh, five shorter stories. We have From Russia With Love. And even if you haven't read these books, you probably recognise the names from the movies. They are good books. They are worth reading. We have Goldfinger. Or a Goldfinger. What a character. Terrible cover, though, really. Then we have the modern classics. Live and Let Die. We have another one of the Penguin ones with the cooler covers. This is Moonraker. This is Octopussy and the Living Daylights. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. What have we got here? Quantum of Solace, the complete James Bond short stories. I actually read all these a while ago now, a good probably three or four years ago at least. And uh, I'm not a massive Bond fan or anything, especially like the movies. I do like the old movies with like Sean Connery and then maybe up to like Pierce Brosnan. He was all right, I guess. But, uh, I mean, the, the books are good, so... Although Bond himself is a bit of a misogynist, but whatever. Is, you, you expect that going in. Here we have the Diamond Smugglers, the Man with the Golden Gun. The Spy Who Loved Me. 
And then we have YOLO. No, sorry, YOLT. Uh, you only live twice. And that is it for, for uh, the Fleming Bond books. So yeah, I do have another one of his as well. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I have it through there. It's not a Bond book, but it is another Fleming book. So I'll check that out. Here we have Thomas Flint, Happy Lemons, How Laughter Breeds Success. And he's basically like a Danish laughter yoga expert. This is a book I was sent. And um, yeah, it was interesting. I mean... I wouldn't say I've necessarily put any of the tools or whatever into practice, but it is interesting to read about that kind of philosophy. All right, now we've got Gillian Flynn. So we have Gone Girl, which I didn't really like, unfortunately. I'm not... This is the thing, is that I've read most of Flynn's books, but I'm not a massive fan of hers. We have Sharp Objects, which again, I didn't particularly like. I thought it was okay, a bit slow, and then near the end it got a bit ridiculous, unfortunately. But um, yeah, read it anyway. Then we have The Grown Up, which this was the second one that I read. Basically, I read Gone Girl and was like, eh, it's not really for me. Then I read The Grown Up, really like this. This was like a 4.5 out of 5 for me. I love the ambiguity of the ending as well. I just thought this was masterfully done. This one was great. So that then convinced me to carry on reading her stuff. And then I read Sharp Objects and didn't really enjoy that one much. But by this point, I'm like, I might as well read Dark Places or whatever. And in fact, I have a buddy read of it coming up. Okay, then we have The Future of Healthcare, Humans and Machines Partnering for Better Outcomes by Emmanuel Fombu, MD. And this is actually a book by one of my clients, so this is a book that I worked with him on. And I've literally only just got the copies of this in the post. And uh, it's, I, I, just, I can't wait for people to read this, because to be honest, I think it's a bit of a game changer. Like, you don't need to be into medicine or a healthcare practitioner or whatever to read that and get enjoyment from it. It's basically talking about how in the future, you know, things like, you know how Netflix's algorithm recommends shows to you based on what other people similar to you have watched. Imagine a healthcare system that, you know, suggested preventative measures based on potential diseases that people similar to you have developed. You know, how many cases of diabetes we could reduce just by reaching people at the right moment and changing their diet, you know, and virtual uh, consultations and stuff. I actually did that the other day. So I ran out of my medication, had a consultation with a doctor via push doctor on my iPhone. That meant I didn't have to ha have the three week wait to get into my GP, during which point I'd be there with no medication. It's the future, man, I'm telling you. Then we have Alan Dean Foster, Midworld. This is Todd the Librarian's favourite book. This is going to make him very happy. Mm. All we need is Becca playing Skyrim or something for this to literally just be the, the librarian household. Maybe I should change my channel name to Dane the Librarian. <laughs> All right, last little stack here. So we're doing well today. We're doing well for time. What is this? This is The Book of the Failed Jumper by R.D. France. This is senseless suicide. 14 days after the 10th, we come to reflect upon the penance, lost in surrealism while delving for truth. Nobody for sure on the street seems so wise. There is a trend of the loosening, whereas upon the storm of the vortex, the coil tightens as you breathe, and it won't be long before you let go. Just remember those who told you to hang on but didn't themselves. Just who the hell do they think they are? The dogs of war are upon us. In our every heartbeat pulsating, we live in vaporized dreams, shattered by the tapping squeeze, rubber on glass in gliding motion. Nobody knows for sure what went on, and finally in the end, only it alone could tame itself. Motions of the spiritual warrior, a gathering of the mental clan. Whose side are you on? Black and white just won't suffice. Make a choice and live in it. Cesspit of your tarry mind. Go reach out for your father. Mother's been pillaged to death. Alright, anyway, next up we have Ailsa Frank, Cut the Crap and Feel Amazing. I do like this title. It's, uh, it's an alright book. It's just a generic self-help book, really. It'll teach you to get into the amazing zone and rise above negative thinking and dramas. And Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl, edited by Otto H. Frank and Merjam Pressler. And I didn't realise until after, like, I grew up, I guess, that this is a, like, this is a truncated version. This isn't the whole thing of Anne Frank's diary. But I've always just been like, yeah, well, I've read Anne Frank's diary. But thinking about it, I should probably, shouldn't I? I should get myself a copy of the full uh, non-truncated version. I don't know. Somebody, um, somebody let me know if you think I should do that. Maybe I'll do it as a buddy read if anyone wants to do that. I think that could be interesting. Um... 
Maybe if there's like a Holocaust Memorial Day or something, we can tie it in with that. Who knows? Anyway, here is the Friargate Anthology, creative work from York Area Quakers and Supporters, edited by Janet Dean and John Fieldhouse. It's basically a collection of short stories, poetry, a little bit of music, a little bit of art. Let me show you a little bit of the art. From um, basically, yeah, this, this, this group of writers in York. So a couple of years ago, I was invited along to York Literature Festival through my book blog, socialbookshelves.com. So I went along and sort of blogged it and picked up a few bits and bobs. And this is one of the things that I picked up. Here we have Ben Fraser, You Know You're Getting Old When. And this is like just one of those pocket funny books. I think it's from, Mar yeah, it's from Marks and Spencer. And uh, I don't know, it's just got little things like, you use a mail order dentist. You send them your teeth and they come back as good as new. Middle-aged people give up their seats for you on the bus. And the reason I had this is, I think it was from like, I went to a car boot sale or a charity shop or something and I was like, I'm determined to buy something. So I bought that. <laughs> Um, here we have two books by Jesse James Freeman, who is an indie author. He actually used to be the vice president of something or other at a book trope a publishing house, and they published my first couple of books. They've since gone bust, unfortunately. But here are his two books: it is Billy Purgatory, I Am the Devil Bird, and Billy Purgatory and the Curse of the Satanic Five. And basically, this is pretty much like. It's a bit like funny badass YA written by a Texan about a skateboarding kid. If, you'll know from that whether you want to read this or not. Then we have David M. Friedman, Wild in America. This is a book that I was sent for review purposes. Actually found it really fascinating. Good one to read if you're a Wild fan. Because basically what happened is Wild went to America and just portrayed himself as a celebrity. And then people believed him. And then by the time he came back to England, he was actually a celebrity. And this, this tells you all about it. I think... Um, yeah, it's, the subtitle is Oscar Wilde and the Invention of Modern Celebrity. So it kind of compares him to people like Paris Hilton and stuff like that. It is a similar route that he took. To fame, at least. All right, and the last books I have to show you are my Stephen Fry books. So we have Making History, which this is about uh, like a guy who kind of goes back in time and tries to stop Hitler, basically. The problem is, is that like that plot point has been done to death, you know, but... I mean, it was a decent enough take on it. It wasn't terrible. It's just, it's been done, you know. We have Moab is my wash pot. And this is his autobiography or the first part of his autobiography. Interesting enough. The Fry Chronicles. There's another volume of uh, autobiography. And this one, I think, it, this was the one where, yeah, where the gimmick is everything. Like every chapter begins with C. Because he talks about how, like, the main things that have you know, influenced his life begin with C. So I think it's cigarettes and cocaine and coffee or something. I don't know. The Hippopotamus. This is about an old, sour, womanizing, cantankerous, whiskey-sodden beast of a failed poet and drama critic. Yeah, I am reading that from the blurb. I do remember it, though. It's fine. The Liar. Again, fiction. It was all right. And we have The Ode Less Travelled, which I read recently and gave a two out of five for I will link to my review of this uh, basically he just came across as really slimy and it. it was really off-putting just really elitist and this is supposed to be getting people into poetry and I think it would turn them off and uh, yeah I mean I'm glad that I waited until after I was a poet to read this and then we have finally the stars tennis balls which uh, this was about Ned Madston I seem to remember watching a, like a Netflix uh, version of this Netflix special or something and let's take that off the top of that pile there so uh, yeah that is it for this week's bookshelf tour now part of the reason for this is actually every now and then I have to shuffle all my books along so basically I added like one Agatha Christie book and then that had knock-on effects for the rest of my bookcase so actually about the first this this many books on this shelf uh, in the previous bookcase tour because they've had to move along because they're all sorted alphabetically but um yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video let me know what you thought in the comments let me know if you've read any of the these books hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit subscribe for more and i will see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye bye